Hey guys, welcome to my talk on TCRs, a game theoretic approach. I'm Aditya Asgaukar. I'm a contractor at the Ethereum Foundation, and I formerly used to be uh, working at a lab at USC. Uh, so credits first. Uh, this is uh, this paper was part of my thesis uh, at USC, and credits to Professor Bhaskar, without whose guidance this work would not have been possible. So, uh, the theme of the talk is going to be mechanism design in the blockchain space. And if it seems too fancy, it just means engineering approaches to economic mechanisms uh, to you know, enable desirable objectives for us, like social choice functions or specific actions that we want to incentivize uh, actors in the blockchain space to, to perform. And this is especially relevant for us in the blockchain space because we have some payoff functions that are very readily available to us, like staking rewards or staking penalties, uh, token values, you know, you link lots of things to token values and then the price of the token drives a lot of the system. So TCRs, it's uh, 2019 and we are all in the crypto space, so I'm sure everyone has heard TCR, what, what TCRs are. Uh, the three main parts of a TCR, the registry itself, which is a list that contains some information of value to the public. There's a token associated with this registry, which is something like a share in this venture. And then there is the process of curation, uh, where you know, the registry is actively being maintained by a set of participants, which are the token holders. And some popular examples are AdChain, which shows you the top sites the, for advertising your content on. And a more recent one is called Kleros TCR, and it actually maps uh, a token to its uh, token contract address. That's, this, is a, this is a pretty cool one. And the objective of this entire TCR and its incentive model is going to be perfectly curating the list of items that, that it claims to curate. So for example, if, if the objective of the registry is top 10 restaurants in the town, then it should really curate top 10 restaurants in the town. It shouldn't, you know, it, it should be a true registry. And the basic assumption with all TCRs is that the token value itself is linked to the quality of the registry. It's, it should really depict what it claims to depict. It, if it says top 10 restaurants, uh, the closer it is to depicting these top 10 restaurants, uh, the, the higher its token value will be. That's the assumption we'll go with. And there is an application. So the registry is, let's say it's bootstrapped with some items. Uh, the candidates who want to get into this registry apply to it. And the application process is such. Um, so candidates buy some tokens of this registry. And they apply to the registry by staking some amount of tokens. And to the token holders uh, of the registry, they vote on whether to accept or reject the candidate. And if a candidate is rejected, then the stake that the candidate put up is going to be slashed. And it's actually going to be distributed to the voters who voted on rejecting the candidate. And as a secondary incentive for people to vote uh, for the for whether accepting or rejecting, whichever the correct choice is, the winning side of the vote uh, slashes the losing side and they gain some fraction of tokens from there. So the outcomes that we desire are that good candidates are accepted. And what we have here is that the quality of the TCR improves because the candidate is good. And hence, the token value increases. And bad candidates should be rejected. And the incentive we have here is that the quality of the TCR doesn't degrade as it would if the bad candidate was accepted. And the token value is maintained. Yeah? So is a candidate a person who wants to be a token holder, or is it like one of the restaurants? That one of the restaurants. Okay. So whoever wants to be in the registry itself. Okay. right? So candidate is the applicant. Um, so bad candidates are rejected because uh, if they were accepted, well, token value goes down because quality of the TCR goes down. And as a, sec as a secondary incentive, the candidates stake tokens are going to be slashed and distributed among the winning voters. So the possible outcomes that we have are a candidate is accepted, and hopefully the candidate is good. And this means that the token holders each 
hold the same amount of tokens, but now since the candidate was good and was accepted into the registry, their token value increases because our assumption is token value is linked to quality of the registry. And bad candidates are, with a, with a similar logic, rejected because they would drive down the price of the, TC, uh, price of the token and the quality of the TCR. So if a candidate is rejected, then each token holder uh, is going to have an increased amount of tokens, but the token value is not going to change because the quality of the TCR didn't change at all. So with the assumption that to token price is directly correlated with TCR value, so this, let's say this is the base quality of the TCR, which is also an indicator for price of the token. And we have a good candidate that improves the quality of the TCR. Then this candidate should be accepted. And similarly, if we have a bad candidate, uh, this candidate should be rejected because quality of the TCR is degraded. Uh, and the, the, the really the question that we want to ask is, what happens if a candidate is only marginally good? The candidate is not really good, like this case, nor really bad. He's just, just on the bench. Um, and here, token holders actually have a dilemma. Should we accept the candidate and have a slightly higher value token because the quality of the TCR improves just by a bit, or should we reject this candidate and gain his slash tokens, right? So either we, we accept the candidate, hold the same amount of tokens, but each of them is appreciated slightly, or we reject the candidate, each token is valued the same as before, except that you have more tokens now from the slashing of the candidate. And there is this gray area where you know, marginally good candidates might just be rejected for no reason. And this has the major implication that it has is for the same set of candidates, the order of application matters. If a candidate who is good uh, applies, let's say, towards the end of this sequence of candidates, by then the candidate might, might just be marginally good and be rejected for you know, absolutely no reason. So well, this is the well actually moment of the presentation. These problems are arising because uh, we are distributing slash tokens from rejected candidates. And the question that we should be asking is, why is distributing these slashing tokens necessary? And isn't the token price uh, going to have the same effects as the answer to the first question? Right? And well, I have some answers. One, you don't need to distribute slash tokens. It is not necessary. And two, token price is sufficient to do whatever mechanism the answer to the first question does. Um, so why was slashing distributed tokens a part of the TCR design in the first place? Well, the answer is uh, so that token holders are incentivized to vote. They aren't, they should, if they see a bad candidate, they should have an incentive other than token price to reject the candidate. And here, uh, the incentive is gaining of these slash tokens. Well, but my claim is that just having a token is sufficient. Just correlating your TCR quality with price of the token is good enough. There is no token amount versus token value dilemma that voters have if you do this. And there is a natural incentive to vote because if you don't vote and you know, some wrong decision goes through, then the token price might drop. And that's, that's just uh, a natural incentive that's out there. So the conclusion is sound mechanism design is really essential to the security of dApps. And complicated mechanisms are usually very hard to analyze. And even simple modifications such as you know, distributing slash tokens uh, is going to have unusual, unintended side effects uh, to the mechanisms that you're trying to enforce. Uh, if you want to read more about this, uh, there is a paper called TCR is a game theoretic approach that I wrote. It's on archives. Um, you can check that out. You can talk to me. Uh, thanks. That'll be all for the presentation. That's my Twitter if you want to hit me up. Uh, we can do a few rounds of questions. So if you're not going to distribute the slash tokens, then instead you just burn them or something? Just burn them. OK, yeah. cool. The reason that you need to you know, have, those, have candidates stake those tokens is so that it creates a natural demand for tokens, so that participants who want to get in need to buy those tokens. And there is a natural demand, hence.
But you can just slash them and not distribute them. That works well. Okay. Is there uh, any mechanisms that you're putting in place that kind of, um, like a worry is that people that have bought a lot of tokens end up getting a, like un an unfair amount of um, voting power within the TCR and can like do false signaling. Is there any mechanisms you put in place to like limit the impacts of like whales on TCRs? Well, you could do stuff like uh, quadratic voting, I think. Uh, but I'm not sure how, you know, uh, I'm not sure how you can lessen the bad effects of having whales in your token economy. Uh, the gentleman in the front. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, so, uh, don't people who hold these tokens have an incentive to reject customers because that means more tokens will be burned, which means there's less in supply, which means your token value goes up. So, don't you actually have a false incentive to keep rejecting these people? At least um, in the short term, to artificially increase the token value because your supply. Well, so there is a less. dilemma there too. Just yeah. burning those tokens is not going to mean there is a higher demand for the reduced amount of tokens in the system now, because let's say people see your TCR rejecting good candidates from being uh, on the registry. That means that you know, your TCR is not performing the objectives it is supposed to enforce. The, the, the assumption is the TCR quality and uh, the token holders are going to curate, are going to actively maintain the quality of the registry. And if, you know, if, if people see that that's not happening, then the tokens, tokens are not worth anything. I see. So was that something that you rigorously modeled and studied? Because no, I, I didn't there seems that. to be some threshold where this is true. Sure, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Okay. it is a dilemma. Got it. Though. That's yeah. what I want to okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I, I wondered if you could just tell us a little bit about that assumption. So it's, I mean, it's uh, an interesting assumption, right? Like the price of the token is proportional or correlated with the quality of the registry. Um, and like, if that assumption's true, then all this stuff follows. But like, is that right. a good assumption? Like what's the mechanism in right. reality? So the way, they, the way existing TCRs bootstrapped this assumption was uh, what you do is you populate the, the TCR before you, you know, launch your registry. Um, and well, consumers who you know want to look up the the objective functions that the TCR maintains, like top ten restaurants. Let's say people look at the list of top ten restaurants, you know, regularly when they go out. Well, that means any restaurant that wants to be in this list, you know, highly coveted list of top ten restaurants, has to buy tokens from you, from from uh, the registry, and stake them to apply. That creates a natural demand. So more and more people want to apply just because everyone looks up to your registry. Yeah, okay, so you stake, a, I forgot that part, where you stake them to apply. Like if I want my restaurant on the list, I need to buy some tokens and stake them. Right, if, if yeah. you want to apply. Okay, right. cool. But the, the important part is that you bootstrap your TCR where you populate it with some quality content so that, you know, to begin with, your tokens aren't valued at, valued at zero. Yeah. All right, we have time for one more. Okay. So I guess I'm kind of answering her comment um, earlier. So one of the things you could try to do if you can actually manipulate this in the token price and the value, if you can already tie the quality of TCR to the value of the tokens, mm -hmm. the increase from the quality improvement has to be going faster, the slope has to be greater than the amount of increased token that you can get by rejecting other candidates. Because otherwise, as the token holders, I don't have to increase the quality of the TCR. I can just keep rejecting and then increase the amount of tokens that, that I have. So overall, token value multiplied by the amount that I have is going to keep increasing. So I don't necessarily have an incentive to make the quality better. So the slope of the quality tied to the token value has mm -hmm. to be steeper than the increased amount from rejection is what I would add to that design. Sure, so that's, that's very related to the earlier question, but I think the answer is if people see that you're rejecting high quality candidates from your TCR for no good reason, then you know, you're not actively maintaining your registry. And so the assumptions made by the original TCR designers was that then you know, people won't value your TCR as much. 
then you actually goal. have to model that into the rejection. So now yeah, the rejection sure. is not mm -hmm. that the value is going to stay the same, but value can potentially decrease. Sure. So I think you'll actually change, need to change the model to have that assumption. Yeah, that, that's a good direction for future work. I'll keep that in mind. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you, guys.